Lashley is a three-time national amateur wrestling champion at Missouri Valley College. And as for Chad you Griggs. You ready? Fight. Here's a man that began as a sparring partner for Don the Predator Fry. Fry was his coach in the IFL. What a way to cut your teeth with Don Fry. A true original in MMA and no surprise by what Bobby Lashley begins the fight with. Tried and true method of taking Griggs to the canvas. Why do you see, Frank Shamrock, many of the stars from pro wrestling now enter MMA? Well, it's basically the same business. Ours, we just work a lot less. We do a lot less shows, and that's a little more dangerous, in my opinion, than this one. But they make more money in the WWE or with they, those big shows. They do, but they work a lot harder. They do a lot more shows. And I'm talking 200 shows a year instead of one. And if I can interject, I think for a lot of them, like Bobby Lashley, it comes down to competition. They miss real competition. That's what Bobby said. He just loves to compete in anything. Lashley, side control. And they want him to start stepping up in competition. Yes, that is correct. We thought the litmus test would be Wes Sims. He took care of him in just two minutes and six seconds in his strike force debut. Already controlling Chad the Grave Digger Riggs early here in round one. And, you know, four of his five wins have come inside the first round. The fastest win was just 24 seconds when he submitted Mike Cook. But it's going to be interesting to see how this match unfolds and if Bobby Lashley is indeed the real deal at heavyweight. Well, Lashley's really looking to step on the left arm of Griggs and pin it so he's got a free open shot to his face while he's controlling him. Bobby Lashley on top in black. Griggs in red on the bottom. Three five-minute rounds in the heavyweights. In the cage. Lashley competed in January. Cage rust could be a factor for Griggs, a full-time firefighter and paramedic. He hasn't fought since winning in April of 2009. He comes into this fight with a three-fight win streak, but right now being controlled by the wrestler. And Lashley seems real content just to hang out in the side mount, beat on Griggs here. I think he's going to tire him out, maybe go for another position or another submission. Bobby Lashley told us in the fighter meetings he was looking for the submission win. Of course, used to work out at American Top Team in Coconut Creek, Florida. Now has his own school, American Top Team Altitude in Colorado. Has worked with the likes of Dan Lambert and Nate James, who a recent purple belt in BJJ under Dave Camarillo. And Griggs gets it back up to his feet. This is where Griggs needs to be, up swinging, dirty boxing. Elbows short inside. A lot of energy fence. expended by Lashley. Let go of the fence. As he takes Griggs down once again. Lashley recently spent time at American Kickboxing Academy in San Jose, working with the likes of Cain Velasquez, who, of course, is going to challenge Brock Lesnar for the UFC title. Also, Daniel Cormier, who improved to 5-0 and on our undercard. And, you know, they may have trained with each other, but when we asked Daniel Cormier about a possible fight with Bobby Lashley, he said, hey, bring it. That could be a very interesting tilt. Very tough heavyweights. Lashley content to work the top, the head position control here and just keep banging on him. Griggs is finding those holes, though. Knee up, there we go. And I think that hurt Lashley. That hurt. That shot right there goes right to your solar plex. That hurts. All eight of Griggs' victories have come inside the distance. Seven of those via form of knockout. Referred to Lashley as a cut and dry wrestler. One would think because of the size difference, there was talk that Griggs might move down to 205. The longer this fight goes, one would think it would be in favor of the Grave Digger, Chad Griggs. I believe so. I think he's got submission ability. So what's the strategy okay, here, stop, stop, Frank, stop, with stop, both stop. fighters on the cage? Now they break them up. Just, just burning energy and looking for spots. That was a well-timed right uppercut right there. Don't grab the thing. Lashley, another double leg takedown. Griggs is doing good damage the from the bottom, the and he's timing it nicely. He's timing those shots from Lashley nicely. Now blood on the chest of Griggs, and that may be coming from the face of Lashley. Looks like it is. Griggs, yeah, very, Griggs very economical in the striking department, landing 12 of 14. Ooh. Lashley very busy, 28 of 56, but there is a, a bad cut. And for Lashley. Yeah, and in September, we're going to see the season premiere of Dexter. We might be getting a uh, preview right here in terms of the plasma. 
14 seconds remaining in the first round, scheduled for three. Five minute rounds, heavyweights in the cage. Now this cut is a big problem here because he's got to make this a finishing fight now. And he's not known for submission holds. And now that he's seen his own blood, real blood, let's see how he responds. That's right, uh, Bobby Lashley has been cut. Wow. And it's a bad one. Below the eye. At least, I mean, if, you know, it's in the, below the eye. It's not in the worst place, thankfully. That's a, that's a bad looking cut, though. The problem with that type of cut is as soon as the blood starts pumping and as soon as he starts working hard, that thing's gonna be pumping blood. You didn't really see the uppercut or where that shot came from or the cut, but look at that uppercut. Well timed. I think the inside of the glove hit Lashley right there on the, on the cheekbone, eye bone, and popped him right open. And Griggs, good defense. He's fighting the takedown enough to damage Lashley on the way down and then get to a good position so he can wrestle himself back up. Second round, scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Bobby Lashley in black, taking on Chad Griggs, the grave digger, 32 years old from Tucson, Arizona, in red. And he's got his eye on Lashley's cut. Oh, yeah. It's going to become a target here, this whole fight. Briggs was the more economical striker. Whoa, what a takedown. And that's the fourth takedown of the fight. Would you give the opening round based on takedowns to Lashley, Frank? I got to give it to Lashley in round number one. And those takedowns are impressive, but you know what, how much energy it takes to lift the big man up and slam him like that. That is not an economical move by Bobby Lashley. Putting him in the cage, this is good business here, but those big takedowns, a lot of energy. First time the Griggs has gone to round two since a third round TKO win back in February of 2007. The only other time Lashley made it to round two, he ended up going the distance and picking up a win over journeyman Jason Guida in his second pro bout. Lashley's doing good work on the cage, but again, he's got to spin that head of Griggs and put it in the cage. Otherwise, Griggs going to slide out like he's doing right now. He's going to keep sliding out, punching and striking. Griggs told us that Lashley is a cut and dry wrestler and he wants to pop him in his big head. Lashley telling us, and especially when you look at the heavyweight division here at Strike Force, he wants to be in a title mix by the end of 2011. But judging by his performance so far, I don't know if he'd be ready for some of the heavyweights at this promotion. He needs to make that emphatic statement, but let's not discredit the talents of Chad Griggs. Again, a man who hasn't fought in over a year, came in really as an opponent for Bobby Lashley, but so far is, is surviving. But Lashley needs to show a little more aggression, he needs to show that killer instinct. He needs to bring out the killer. He needs to go for some holds here too, because he's in such dominant positions. He's not doing that much damage. He's kind of playing the clock here. He needs to be going for those holds. And for a wrestler in MMA, especially when the fight goes to the ground, what's the biggest transition that they have to make in this sport? You know, I think it's about giving up control when you're in a dominant wrestling position. And to do a good submission, a lot of times you got to give up control. He's got a great shoulder lock here. He's got a great arm lock here from the side mount. But this is a beatdown position he just went to. Full mount. Lastly now, ground and pound. And Griggs trying to bring him in. Griggs has got to spin around and get his head out of that cage. He's got to get his feet up on that cage. And that's what he does, Frank Shamrock. Trying to buck and roll. He's got to keep going. He's got Bobby nice and high. He's got to keep popping. Lashley told us he felt a little leaner, quicker than in his past fights. Still in full mount, and this is the most dominant of positions. Posturing up again. Lashley punches and bunches. Briggs coming back with a couple of strikes of his own. Needs to control Lashley's posture. Someone needs to teach Lashley the side choke. <laughs> the arm entangled side choke. Yeah, that's trying. what he needs to be doing here. 
set it up. What would he have to do to, to secure that, uh, Frank? Punch him on the side of the head when he goes to block it, push the arm across, pin the arm with his own head, choke him out. So this is arm bar position yeah, for Lashley. The left arm is right there for the taking. Lastly, not looking for it at all. Keep him in front, keep the punches in front. It's one thing to grind out the win, being the wrestler, wanting to utilize the ground and pound. Of course, Mark the Hammer Coleman, the, the godfather of ground and pound. But again, if you okay, want to put yourself on the map, the referee now, stand now stand bringing stand them back up. up. But up. if you want to make your mark, Frank, you know all stand about up. it. You stand have up. to make a statement, especially stand at this stand level. Got to be a star. You got to go for it. You got to take chances. Stand stand and stand you got to win. Well, Ashley is very winded, and that eye is in trouble. Doctor. 33 seconds remaining. Dr. George Guerrero is the doctor. Let's see, Lashley. Look at me. Yeah. Can, Can you see? see? Yeah. Sure. Go continue. Mm -hmm. You got you got a hold. He's all right. Okay. And they will let him continue. He said he wanted to. You heard yes. You gonna give me something? Lastly, mouth open, breathing heavily. This is real, folks. It's not acting like a professional wrestling. Bobby Lashley uh -oh. finding it out. He shoots. Nice sprawl by Griggs. I was just about to say I didn't like the look on Lashley's face when he was backing up. He looked tired. He does look tired. And again, Griggs with the sprawl and hits him on that eye. Hammer fist on that eye. Chill, being a Canadian, this is where Matt Serra pulled off the mega upset of George St. Pierre. Well, we kick off the night with an upset. The grave digger Chad Griggs sends Bobby Lashley to his first professional MMA loss. Let's look at this uppercut again. I think this is the one that caught him. And Bobby got caught because he wasn't leading with anything. Look, he drops, boom, right into the uppercut. He gets in deep, he gets his takedown, but he paid dearly. And I watched Bobby's hips get tired pretty quickly on this. Whoa. And Hammer fisting it up. He got stuck on his knees on that single leg. And knees hurt. You could tell Bobby's just clinking. He's not really going anywhere. Frank, muscles need oxygen. That's Should right. Bobby Lashley get even leaner? I mean, I don't know if that's it. I think it's about... He outstruck Griggs on the ground, 68 to 25. Many of those weren't that effective, and many probably led to emptying that gas tank even more quickly. Yeah, and the one that Griggs threw, cut him, hurt him, hit him. Griggs was banging. All right, let's uh, get the official decision with the maestro of the microphone, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped at the end of round number two. Our referee in charge, John Shortley, had seen enough. He is the winner by way of technical knockout, Chad the Great.